Hey everybody, welcome to Wagered on Tilt. I am T, and today we are going to be tackling part three of our NHL predictor. These are going to be stats that are going to be pulled into the dashboard that will allow us to start doing some of these predictions that we're going to be needing. Previously, in part one, we set up just the general sheet. In part two, we went ahead and set up some of our basic statistics. Now, in this one, we're going to actually start pulling it all together. So let's go ahead and jump in. So now that we have our stats collected and our sheet is basically set up, let's go ahead and start dropping in some of the pieces of information that we're going to use for calculating a predicted score and then seeing our percentage chance to win. So here I'm just going to go ahead and use the Las Vegas Golden Knights versus the LA Kings. I've gone ahead and set the goalies. The goalie save percentages are also being pulled in from the goalies tab based upon the goalie name. Then over here we have a predicted score. The predicted score is going to be using outputs uh, for the offensive strength away versus the defensive strength home times the averages. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and look at this information here, look at the way that we're calculating this out. So here we're going to use an indirect then we're going to look at the outputs sheet and look for column C. We're going to match on A3, which is the Las Vegas Golden Knights. We're going to look for them in the outputs. Then we're going to multiply this value, which is going to be the strength of offense, times the defensive strength. So to find it, we're going to use another similar formula, indirect outputs. But this time we're going to target column D, which is going to give us our defensive stats that we need for the home team. So that's why we're also going to change the match here to A4, which is going to be the home team. And then finally, we're going to times it by the league average, which is going to be away home T71. Once we have that, you can go ahead and copy and paste that formula down below. And then you just need to switch out the targets here and here. Because what's going to happen is we'll switch instead of A3, this becomes A4. And instead of A4, this becomes A3. So we just invert those two. So with the basic statistics from our output sheet, we're seeing that the predicted score is that this will be 1.6 goals to 1.7 goals. Now let's go ahead and set up our power play goals that we are expecting. So we're going to say equals indirect outputs. And it's going to be on column F and we're going to look for A3, which is the away team from outputs. And we're going to have that value times by another indirect outputs. And this is going to be column H. And we're going to match on the home team here from outputs A to A, zero. And then we're going to say times 1 minus C4. So what we're doing here is we're going to go ahead and take the scoring chances that they have on a power play when you're the away team versus the power play chances that the home team gives up. And then we're going to take it by the amount of goals that go in by a percentage. So this is where we're going to be using the goalie save percentage. All right. So that's gone ahead and said 0 0.06 would be a calculated version. Now we're going to go ahead and take the same formula, copy and paste it, and just invert our values here. So instead of A3, this becomes A4. This one goes from A4 to A3. And this one becomes from C4 to C3. And we hit enter, and then we see that. So for our predicted sum, we're going to say G3 plus D3. And then we'll copy and paste that down below as well. That way now we have our predicted score from here that is going ahead and giving us a predicted sum amount. The last thing you'll want to do for the home team is go ahead and just add in whatever your home ice advantage is. Again, this can range. Typically it's 0.33 goals for home ice. However, if you have calculated it as something else, if you put it in here and just point to that cell in the formula, it will always pull in the most recent information. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and set up our Poisson distribution. Now here's the example. Previously we've done this. Uh, it's pretty basic. So you're going to lock in on your column for the away team and allow the row to change. 
you're going to target H3, which is our predicted scores, and you're going to set this to false. And then you're going to times it by another Poisson distribution, where we have it now locking on the row and not the column. You're targeting the home team's predicted score and setting again to false to give us a percentage. Once we have that formula, we can copy and paste it across and then convert these to percentages. And there we are. We can also take these and then now just highlight, double click on the double arrow to expand those out to make it easier to read. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my heat map in here. What we're going to wanna do is go ahead and add in our little field here to say who's going to be getting what. So I'm gonna say this is the away value and this is the home value. For the away value, we just need to sum equals sum all of the locations where we know that the away team would win. So the away team would win if it is a one to zero. So then I'm just gonna highlight all those cells and then hit comma. And then we'd win if it was two to one, comma. And you just keep doing this all the way down. All right, so now that we have all those values in there, we'll go ahead and close out the sum. And that gives us a 30% chance for them to actually win based upon those scores. To get the opposite, you'll just say equals one minus the score above it. So they have a 69% chance to win as the home team. So for our predicted chance to win, let's go ahead and enter that, which will be equal the P score right there, because that is their team. All right, so they have a 30% chance. Copy and paste this one down below. And we'll just change out from row three to row four, and we're done there. So now we have a money line prediction that says that there's a 30% chance Vegas can beat the kings based upon the stats that we have and some of the predictor tools we've built. Now we need to go back into p-score and we're going to try and figure out how well can they win if they are actually going to be playing against them in a spread setup. So from here we can go ahead and just copy this formula, paste it down here, and we should be fine. Let me double check our numbers. All right. So you'll just copy and paste this. Now where you're going to change things though is in this calculator here, right? Where we're gonna see these values. So we'll paste this down here. So let's go ahead and put a field here that's called spread. Let's say minus 1.5 and 1.5. So what we'll say is equals if this cell is greater than zero, then we would assume that this is a plus on the spread. So we'll find everywhere by adding the 1.5 it would win. And this only works for a plus 1.5 for now because this is how I set the sheet up. Uh, NHL games always start out as a plus or minus one and a half goals. You almost never see anything other than that. So we'll add a comma. So now also the team could win is the away team if they have a one and a half goal here because zero plus one and a half is one and a half. That half point hook still beats them. Now we start our step stair. And again, you just drag, highlight, comma, drag, highlight, comma, drag, highlight, comma, all the way down. All right. Now we need to set up the scenario where if it's a minus, so we're gonna say sum, and let's see here, would a game win is a two to zero with minus one and a half? Yes, it would. Great, comma. Would a three, you know, almost minus two still cover? Yes, so comma. So this one is gonna be much smaller, much smaller. Now that we have the percentage for them to cover that spread, we're gonna take the same thing and just do it now for the uh, home team. So if this number is greater than zero, sum, where we're adding a goal, so they cover in all these scenarios, And then if it's a negative, right? So they're saying they're the powerhouse, so they'll be better than that. So we'll have to then say, a starting at two, because two minus one and a half is 0.5, so we'll still win here, comma, and then 
stair step this thing again, comma. Now they have an 85.17% chance. You could technically kind of just flip these and say minus and subtract from the other one. I do like to see this because in the event that I need to play around with these numbers and see where I can maybe find some value, I would prefer to do it this way versus just doing the method that we did up top where we just subtract. Now that we have our predicted scores um, and chances to cover the spread, we can now pull that information in. So we'll say this field for the predicted cover P score 14% copy and paste this and we can just swap out these values here for which cell we're looking at 19 and we'll just do a format painter to fix this Beep. there we go for our predicted score total um, I prefer to use this one um, with using the sums of column G which are the basic predicted um, this just gives me a bare bones estimate that I can look at so I'd say equal these two and get my score there. So sum G3 to G4, boom. So that is going to be my predicted total, which again, not everybody wants to see it this way or use these numbers, but that's okay. It is up to you how you wanna format your data on these. So now that we have that, we can also then say that we want to set up our spread. So for now, I'm just going to say that this spread over here will be, again, minus one and a half. And this will be 1.5. Now what you can do if you want to control it all from the dashboard is just hook up the p-score spreads here to those fields. So we'll just say this equals dashboard spread. Done. And then we'll just copy and paste this one down as well. Again, this is up to you on how you want to post this information in here. I prefer to operate it all from the dashboard. Great. Now that we've done that, we've gone ahead and started setting up some of our basic predictors. This still is excluding our model prediction for regressions and our Monte Carlos and the power play kill ability. That is a little bit more in depth, but using these basic ways of setting up a sheet as I've walked you through today, this will go ahead and get you to that point that you need. From here, the next step is going to be part four, which is going to be figuring out our edge and being able to manipulate the data. That will be our next step. All right, everybody, that is going to do it for today. We went ahead and have so far gone ahead and set up our spreadsheet. We have collected the statistics that we need, and now we've gone ahead and added some of the parts to the dashboard that are going to help us find the edge. In this last video, we're going to go through actually getting the edge and finding that calculation so that you can know which bet to use. Uh, after that, I will be doing some follow-up videos around the Monte Carlo method, and we'll go through linear regressions through Monte Carlo. I am thinking of adding in an additional lineup builder that will then help try and get the expected goals per game, as well as try and get season totals for those preseason bets. If you like the content that I am producing, uh, please feel free to subscribe, tell your friends, uh, let me know how I'm doing in the comments section. If you have any questions or concerns about the stuff that I'm posting or want to know more, go ahead and just add a comment and I'll try and get back to you as quickly as I can. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I do post a lot of my picks there. Um, previously, the picks were on an older account, so they are gone now. But moving forward, I'm going to be posting my picks there. You can feel free to tail uh, my picks. If not, that's totally fine as well. And then I do plan on doing a video at probably every month to kind of go through and review what my picks and how their outcomes have been and how I came to those decisions and whether those decisions were right or wrong and if they were based on luck or something else that I didn't account for. So until next time, happy wagering.